what with five man venom. Pick? Probably not, right? Well, five man ulti is kind of optimistic. Usually two right. or three is considered a pretty good, good ulti. enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I agree with you there. It's really hard to get a, a five man or anything like that. But Navi continue this kind of little bit push centric trend they pick another hero who is not very mobile that's one thing about their lineup that's kind of suffering right now is mm -hmm. furian's the only one who can really get anywhere on the map venomancer and shadow shaman are both seconds, really slow and unless doom has scorched earth on he's also kind of slow himself so five seconds remaining. i'm a little bit um apprehensive about yeah. this kind of a draft i agree uh, I, I thought they were setting up a, a Ember Pig, and now I think this Puck Pig is really going to punish f what you just brought up. I mean, even Prophet, yeah, sure, he could TP around over the map, but locally, you have to walk around. And he's not exactly the fastest uh, beast there is, so if a Puck gets a good, pretty good coil off, last game, Matt got amazing coil, three, four-man coils. Ten uh, the silences, remaining. like you were pointing out, was a little bit slow on some occasions. <laughs> yeah, there but, was a couple. Yeah. That one by the Ancient. But, but like, remaining. you know, you drop a three, four-man coil on these guys, and suddenly they're sitting duck. Well, I'm we curious as to what uh, what Empire are actually going to pick as their carry. Because they have a Rubik. Dyer Obviously, having no fields is going to help a ton against the magic damage that Navi have, which is a t flat 20% off is massive. Sure. I have a feeling he might just leave Telekinesis at like level 1 or something and just put extra points into that early outside of maxing Fade Bolt just to have that extra survivability. But Navi, Navi looking at one more. Pick. They potentially need their carry as well, unless it's going to be a one roll Doom, which I don't think Havos plays much. I want to say that he doesn't play Doom really at all. I've actually. seen Dendi play Doom mid. Yeah, a few Doom. Times. I, I'm thinking the same. I'm thinking Doom mid, but um, we're gonna find out. So yeah. they ban the life stealer and the dragon eye. And Storm Spirit. I've seen the first play Storm Spirit. I mean, I, I feel like lately Navi has been switching their roles almost even. Ten like, no, then he's still going remaining. mid, but the heroes they play. Like, I've seen Havos play mid heroes a lot, five but he just plays on the safe lane. Yeah. So, you know what, man? I'm going to throw one out of left field right now. Let's go. Mage. For the maneuverability. Reserve time. For the maneuverability, the fact that just he's anti -mage, the that? entire team is based around magic damage. Dire okay. Right now, Vampire, outside of, I guess, Visage. But they're going to go with a Tinker. Okay. I guess it's safe. Is this a Havos Tinker or is this a. a I think Dendi it's a Dendi Tinker. Okay. I've seen him play that a few years ago. Ooh, it could be Funix Tinker, actually. Funix's got to be playing Nature's Prophet, right? He's just so amazing on the hero. I don't know. He plays both of them, though, right? Like, he plays Prophet and Tinker. That's true. So we'll have to see. Speaking of Tinker, I'm not sure if you watched the game yesterday, but Arteezy. Arteezy Tinker is very good, yeah. Remaining. It's, I think, one of the best Tinker I've seen uh, in a long, long time. It's going to be a Spectre, which is going to give Tinker a living hand. With the bot rider on top of that as well. I really like the Spectre pick. It depends on what skill build he's going before. Uh, going forward, there's a popular skill build in like the Euro scene where you max your Desolate by seven, right. and you just basically aggressively fight, which Warriors this team can do. And uh, if you look at heroes battle. like Tinker, Doombringer, they don't go online very quickly, uh, as well as Nature's Prophet. So I think if he does go for that build, Empire could actually come out of the gate uh, rocking pretty fast. It's very easy to underestimate early game Spectre. People do it all the time. Mm. They're like, oh, of... he's a he's a late game Diffuso Blade Radiance or whatever. She's just yeah. a cloud of purple smoke. What could go wrong? Everything, <laughs> basically, is the answer to that question. In case you were wondering, so I'm uh, I'm a fan of, actually of this pick because with the kind of lineup that Empire have, they're just on the fly going to be able to find picks between the Puck and the Bat Rider. So having another hero who can just even casually use Haunt, you know, a couple of auto attacks with the uh, true damage of having Desolate on somebody can be the difference between securing a kill and not getting one. Also being able to get to a fight any point is, I think, honestly, Spectre's biggest selling point. Mm -hmm. out, of the, out of the fact that she obviously benefits greatly from items, like anything that she picks up, like having Radiance is great. If you want to go phase drums into Diffusal, that's okay too. I think Radiance is most likely to be the choice here, just because I feel like that item will hold weight much longer than just having a Diffusal Blade, because heroes like Shadow Shaman, Venomancer, even Phonics, Nature's Prophet, and Heck Tinker, not a lot of base health yeah. on these heroes. So if he gets a decent timing, Haunt is going to destroy begins. that lineup. Yeah, not only that, like Radiance or not, Haunt itself would be canceling Blink Daggers. Uh, most likely Shadow Shaman, who wants to pick it up, and Tinker, who most likely will pick it up. I would even say, I mean, if Dendi has the option to go <laughs> either Blink or Force Staff, I think Force Staff might do him a little bit better this game. I've seen him yeah. go Gules a good few times on Tinker as well. Sure, yeah. Oh, and by the way, we haven't really brought it up, but it is going to be a farming Venomancer. So, Navi what? have done this before. They've done it in TI 
three grand finals, game number one, where they pick like Havol's farming Venomancer, and then 10 minutes in the game, they start ancienting with it. In which case, you know, somewhere in my heart, I call GG because... Was Venge in that game as well? Oh, Mag. Yeah, Venge was. Could be in some trouble bottom. Kale already landed. Puppy Where's... waiting a very long time Where's to steal Shackle? Shackle here. Where's the Shackle? And the Shock! What? Oh. Okay, that was a straight up misplay. You think Shackle would have done it? Absolutely. I think so. Shackle would have done, Shackle done it. Yeah. Done yeah. It. It's two and a half seconds, or two, actually almost three seconds to disable. It's 2.75. And you got to consider not only is he stunning the Batrider for two and a half seconds, that allows the Venomancer to hit, walk closer, hit, walk closer, hit, walk closer. In which okay, case, so once the Shackle's over, they could have killed him. Even giving Puppy the benefit of the doubt there and saying that he thought the extra damage would be enough to get the kill, Shackle at level one almost does as much damage as an Aether Shock does. Because does it's 40, it really? It's 40 damage a second, and it lasts almost three seconds. So it still does over 100 damage. Damn. And that's with Havos getting auto attacks off the entire time. You so. know what we're saying? Hey, he, he waited so long to skill. Do he? Do you think he waited too long in such case that he knew he was out of shackle range? I, and they'd be like, oh shit. <laughs> the shock. I here. mean, I, I think that's probably what happened, but I can't believe that that happened. Okay. Because he auto attacked him like Eight. five yeah. times. <laughs> You gotta know when he's gonna start moving faster. So the ramification of not getting that kill, that means Batrider is gonna be getting a ton of experience under the tower now. And more importantly, for a hero like Venomancer, those kills mean a lot. Because yeah, you don't want to save like Venomancer. Just be cleaning up Puppy's mess right now. He I, wants to go deep. Oh, there's oh, the Aether oh, Shock. Havos okay, needs to be careful. Okay, okay. Now there's the Shackle. Shackle. Yeah, no, there's the first blood. Havos <laughs> needs to... Oh, he's like, no hell. He's running away oh, from the yes. tower. He's such a man. He did manage to juggle the aggro though. So Mag maybe getting a little overconfident that Puppy just blundered the first first blood attempt but they got the second first blood <laughs> which is fine and right. puppy's gonna secure the haste drain for mid if he's gonna keep Dyer's it for dendy he might just take it himself yeah, he'll take it. doesn't have bottle yeah yeah dendy's gonna be getting his bottle very very soon how do you think the, this particular matchup is gonna go between dendy and puck or Dendy's Tinker and uh, Resolution's Puck on a melee. I actually feel this one is still slightly favored for Puck because getting a laser off is probably going to happen every once in a while, but still, you can't really trade with Puck as Tinker because he's always going to have phase shift for at least one of the auto attacks and more or less you're going to be lasering either for CS or to secure a CS by lasering Resolution. So you can see the difference right now. It's 8-2 to two comparative to 15 and 4. So Resolution is doing absolute work in this middle lane thus far. Yeah, and once you get to level 6, the killing potential is going to be there for resolution whereas oh the courier is he gonna go mammo for this i thought he would have because laser was down uh but no he's not gonna what's the two points in laser but i don't understand that well it scales very well just getting two points is 80 damage per rank so it's 160 at level two he's the, in trouble. yeah the, the cooldown doesn't really decrease or anything like that but it's just having like a lane harassment tool and things like that so it's just because you, you don't it. yeah well you can't you can technically dodge it With but you, you, right phase shift it but what i'm saying is you can phase shift before the animation goes off and avoid getting hit but is it worth it probably not i don't know i feel like when you're getting laser you, you're just getting the you're really getting it for the two second blind right yeah so, uh, so that's what i was, I was yeah, yeah. To myself so is the second point really worth it and to that credit so. dendy is getting two points in laser and so is arteezy so they, they know something that you know we oh, do that's not. pretty i like that a lot yeah, the ancient stacking yeah, here. From I didn't even grab. know that you could do from this angle. You never yeah. watch RTZ play Tinker? Just grinds he up on the He does all the time, the man. I, I watch him beat Cloud9, but I, I don't know why he, he gets a second point laser. Listen, so. you watched them beat Envy. <laughs> I don't think Cloud9 lost. I think Envy lost. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm just... Okay, you're going to disagree? Look, Envy was not playing his okay, best. Okay. <laughs> Envy was not playing his best, you know? All right. We're, we're off the subject now, it's fine. I'll, I'll let it go. But just have to consider for the time being that Silent is pretty much getting exactly what's, what he wants out of the early game. Puck is winning mid. So right now, I would honestly give Empire the advantage. Sure. I mean, outside of the fact that Mag has died, he always can collapse into the jungle, maybe take some creep stacks, which it looks like Always Wanna Fly is actually setting up for him as we speak. So it's not like his Blink Dagger is really going to be that delayed. That's the one nice thing about a Batrider, is that even in your worst games, you'll still have like a 10-minute Blink. Yes. If you if you know what you're doing, which is right. taking the stacks in the jungle and the nature's profit blocks. Oh, the block with the tree, Funic with the plays. Get out of here. That is so annoying. That oh. is like that is so important. Dyer's Just we're saying tower. you're gonna get your ten minute blink. Attack. Oh wait, your ten minute blink is not happening, or at least it's happening a little bit later. So uh, that's a pretty big deal. 
Speaking yeah, like of which, 200, let's go. he might be in a little bit of trouble on the top lane here. It's going to be a stifling dagger. Where's the teleport out? The lift is going to cancel that TP. That Desla oh, damage is wrecking. Just two points on Desla in conjunction with that phase boot. Silent is hurting like hell. Van score showing like he had such patience there when he was TPing attack. away. I mean, I think regardless, they were going to get that kill because how much damage Silent was doing. Oh, yeah, middle, like, Demi, he's got coiled. Oh, always want to fly. He's going to throw out the soul assumption. Dendi just barely lives. He breaks the tether teleport reaction from Puppy, and they get a turnaround kill. Dendi lives through that. He even walked a little bit too far, to be honest. I think he could have stopped maybe a little bit, and he wouldn't have taken the extra coil break. But uh, that was... Nail butter. That was close. I feel like Navi as a team is really dodging a lot of the bullets. Attack. Considering uh, they missed the first blood, they, you know, and then have also got it back, not dying to that tower, and then now Denny's surviving <laughs> that one. And we haven't really seen too much farming Venom that Mancer, so I think we should actually take a little bit of time and talk about what this hero is going to try to do, and what item he's going to try to make. So far, it seems like he's going to go straight into a mech. I like the mech choice. I think in this lineup, you don't want the Doom to have to go support items because you want some kind of core to fall back on if you're going to be going a safe lane Venomancer, of course. So just giving him the opportunity to go full on carry, I think is definitely the right choice. So they can just pressure as five. Behind March of the Machines and having Plague Wards up, it's still going to be exceptionally difficult for Empire to take a straight out engagement. They're going to have to rely solely on picks and getting good initiations. So it's very similar to what happened last game when they were playing against Sigma and Sigma had a five man lineup. They're essentially playing against the same style again, mm -hmm. only this time you're going to have to worry about a Doom and a late game Tinker and a Prophet. So right. there's still three pretty high potential threats coming out from Navi. So essentially, Hovosa is not f playing like a true carry Venomancer in a sense. He's going to be going for things like Mantis Out and Butterfly. He's more playing like maybe like a solo mid style where you go for more of the earlier game item. Like Fata got this mech, for example. He's just playing the mech and then later shifting the farm priority to here like Prophet, Doom, and, and Tinker and whatnot. Is that correct? That's what I guess. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming he's going to go, like, maybe Veil Aghanims or something like that. Necrobook. And just rely on uh, rely on his ulti or something to do work. And yeah, Necrobook's also a really viable choice. Sure. Yeah. And I really don't get the Venomancers who skip their ulti at 6. I see so many people do it. I asked uh, EGM about it, and he said, if you don't have mana boots, yes. there's no point getting But he has mana, mana boots, boots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was just looking at it and just like, okay. Yeah, I agree with the mana boots thing, just not having the pool to be able to use the skill. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any reason not to get it here. Maybe he just really values having those Plague Wards, and he thinks that by the time he hits level 8, which if he gets one point in Plague Wards now because he went two Sting and avoided getting his ulti, then he's definitely going to put another point into Ward. Watch him skill his ult now just to piss me off. <laughs> but I'm just thinking, like, if he's putting one point in to keep his Ward yeah, max, yeah. He's aiming for it to be maxed. Yeah. Maybe he just All thinks right, well, that there's well, not going to be an engagement. The truck's going to die. Here we go. The truck. <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> okay, Andy, have you never, like... Oh, oh, oh. Is dead. Oh, he still is ulti. It's probably because they TP reacted. And he's gonna land a Gale. Always gonna fly, taking no, they're, some they're, damage they're from fine. the Sting. And they're gonna kill each other. The I, know, suicide pack. I think he needs a TP. Yeah, he's gonna TP. Yeah, meanwhile, oh, resolution. Or silent on the back line here. Haunted in and uh, got a kill on Puppy. Puppy even hexed him and face boots. And like I said, early game Spectre coming in with Desolate doing a ton of work. He maxed the dagger before the Desolate. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's regardless, it's fine. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's just a first build. And then Vanguard coming out. Now, normally Vanguard suggests he's going to AFK farm and just go something to like Radiance. I think Vanguard, what it means in this game, he's going to hunt aggressively like he just did and look for easy, easy kills on squishies like Venno, Tinker, Chao Shaman, Prophet. I kind of wonder anything. about the Vanguard, though. Not for the reasons that you said, because I agree with those, like just being able to fight or being able to farm a little bit. I just think that if you're going to have the potential to be aggressive, going drums is pretty much just better like every single time. I don't know if the damage block is necessarily that useful because I don't think Vanguard blocks Mass Serpent Ward damage. So in those cases, like when Navi are grouped up as five. Plague Ward damage? Yeah, or Plague Ward. Oh, Dendi's actually gonna die mid as well. And we're gonna see an engagement on top. Shackle onto Vanscore. Teleport coming in from Funic. They wanna try to go for this kill. Vanscore with the immediate lift. Throws Funic back into tower range. Uh, they might be able to get a return kill. Funic blocks himself a bit. Gale gonna land from Havost. Another TP coming in. It's gonna be resolution. Ooh. No cancels. Okay. So they're gonna give up this tower for sure. They do have Glyph, but Silent doesn't have mana to do much. Man, we are seeing how this lineup is really coming into shape when you have Mass Serpent Wards down, Tree in the front, and now a whole bunch of Plague Wards being dropped. There is 
no way that Empire is defending this one. You can see Silent is threatening to go in for the deny. He's thinking about it. TP is going to come in. The glyph is ending right now. Tower goes down. Mac tower flying, but he really can't go into those wards. So a whole bunch of TP are coming in. But it's a blink dagger initiation from the top side here. Puppy being dragged into the trees, but a low duration lasso. And here comes Havos throwing down his ultimate. Or no ultimate, excuse me. Throwing down scale. Puppy's going to die. And Empire coming out of nowhere, just getting kills everywhere. It was actually a two for three in favor of Empire. They lost both of their supports, Dyer's but always want to fly gets attack. a double kill before he goes down. And one of the uh, the plague wards actually got the kill on always want to fly. So I believe that Havos got the majority of that gold, and that's good because he's actually almost going to have a mech when he revives. And we were talking about that 10 minute blink timing, and pretty much right on cue, <laughs> mech comes in and lassos, attack. which was interesting because there was no follow up at all. He yeah, the, the lasso lassoed. actually didn't do anything. He right? was so afraid of the wards that he had to go north because yeah, there was yeah. no other place to go. Now, speaking of which, we, we saw that 5v3 team fight that went up on top in favor of Team Empire. What Navi got out of that, not only was it two kills, they also got Tinker Free Farm, which, by the way, has the bots. Kuroki, what do you think he's going to be farming for? 2k go, normally you go for a straight mech here, but obviously... They count the Radiance. Veno's got the mech. You think Radiance is going to be the item choice? I don't know. I think he needs HP. I think he's probably, yeah, I'm kind of thinking that he might just go tanky, but it's hard to say because... Normally, I would say maybe Vlad's would be a decent choice because he went Shreds. Maybe he wants to go Aura Bringer, but the Aura doesn't necessarily affect his team that much. Sure, it gives him the damage, but nobody benefits from the life steal but him. Mm -hmm. So it's still worth going Vlad's in that case. And he'd have the early Ring of Vesilius as well. He'd have it. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of wondering what he's going to make myself. Yeah. Also, you got to keep in mind that uh, the damage coming oh, up. Oh, blink. Us. Okay. I actually like that a lot because as it stands right now, I mean, Danny doesn't have a blink because he just finished up his bots. Funek doesn't really have much to speak of either because he didn't really have a good start. They gave the jungle to Kuroki. So having that initiation to potentially stop the bat or heck, even just blink in and doom van score. I mean, you can get the just, center clap as well. Just having Illusion. something that goes your way to say, hey, we want to start the fight is going to be beneficial to Navi because if you ever bait Empire into your static defenses of Plague Wards and Mass Serpent Wards and every other type of ward that's in this game, mm -hmm. then it's going to be to your favor. Now, the only thing I'm worried about when you're blinking in to doom somebody is that if you don't get Vanscore, Vanscore, most likely, if he's paying attention, might get your doom. And that's, oh, he'll get it. Yeah. Like, I mean, normally you want to blink in Doom and immediately Scourge Earth, but there is a fairly long cast animation. Yeah, it kind of like jumps up in the air. Like yeah, yeah. So, so if Vanscore is in position, like that's that's something you have to really worry about. So, I think it's most likely blinking in, you know, War Stomp, most likely activate Scourge Earth or whatever. But uh, we'll see how these team fights gonna be breaking out. Can you steal the War Stomp? Yeah, you can. Can you? Yeah. Okay. Anything that costs mana like that, that's a skill you can steal. Okay. He should land the heal, the instant heal, and <laughs> cut that straight away after Doom. It's like, fuck you. That yeah, actually has a long animation, that yeah. heal, because you have to like throw your sword out. Apparently, that's how you heal people when you're Doom. You just you slap them in the swing ice. your sword, yeah. But Navi, they are grouped up very, very early. And to be totally honest, this kind of benefits Empire. The longer it takes Navi to push, the more farm Silent's going to be getting. He's still pretty much the highest in terms of overall CS right now. And they will be sacrificing a tier one. But I do believe that they can oh, win tier two. Wow, has what a nice. Denied. That's the second time. Birds birds are dicks, man. Like I'm just saying. The animation on their attack so fast. Speaking of birds, I really love the uh, the good show Dream League bird intro. Oh, God, we saw, that, I saw that. I was like, we were watching it. We were just like, what in the hell? Because nobody told us that yeah, that yeah. video was going to be on there. We, were, like, we had no idea. But Navi, they're going to drop the Mass Serpent Wards in a Tier 2. And there is no Glyph from Empire. So if they yeah. want to try to engage, they're going to have to go into these wards. And a mech. And a Venno ult. Like, this is really hard to go into. This. I mean, what they're going to try to do, I think... It, oh, there you go. Han to break things up. And it's going to be a TP out from Hobos. The TP? What? He gets a kill. Coil on the front. It's going to be a double for Silent. Navi just fall apart. Extremely quick puppy. He gets an Aether Shock on three. He gets Silent. He gets three kills immediately. So what we're just saying, you're, there's no way you're going to fight into these wards. With Mass Serpent Ward, Shreya, and Plague Ward down. And as soon as Han comes out... Havol says, I'm getting out of this, and he just TP and the rest of the team died. Okay. That was so weird, though, because yeah. when they initiated, they 
ran away from their stationary defense, right? Like the Mass Serpent Wards were down. They, oh wow, oh my God. Bad Scores stole Mass Serpent Wards on top of everything else. <laughs> if it wasn't bad enough, now Empire are gonna get a free Roshan. And so much for saying the drums build because Silent has both Vanguard and drums. So he just says, you know what? I don't need any damage whatsoever. And I'm not gonna argue with him because he's 5-0. and Vector against a team that, uh, well, let's be honest, has very, very scary five versus five potential. But Havos didn't get his Nova off. Because he just TP'd out. Doom, yeah. right? I mean, Navi just bailed on that. I mean, okay, first of all, is it the correct decision to bail away from your static defenses? Or I do think you think it's like a do or die? You have to fight, or you're just gonna lose? Because I it, think as soon as Havos TP'd away, the fight was already lost. Right. Because he's a significant chunk of their damage output at this stage. On so their mech as well. I figure Navi just said, okay, we're not going to win this fight. Let's try to make it take as long as possible or something, you know, try to minimize losses. But it didn't quite work out for them. And uh, comparing the safe lane Venomancer to the Spectre right now, Silent's almost level 13. Havost isn't even level 9. Well, to be fair, a lot of it is in Kuroki. I mean, Kuroki's... Like you said, a big core part of this team, but I mean, if you look at Kuroki, he's level 8. Dyer's he's got a blink, but he hasn't really shown attack. for it. I think he's trying to eat the centaur, and once he does, he's going to no, get He doesn't want to eat it because he has a wolf. But is the wolf better in this case? You don't really I have mean, that I much think you need another damage. stun right now. Well, 30% is still 30%. It's, it's like, if you don't have right click damage, I would argue that having a wolf is even better because 15 attack speed is Bobby. less DPS than 30% flat damage. And yeah, Puppy's dead. Oh, I'll run through this one, buddy. Get me them points, Silent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so far, no points has gone for me, who I have Dendi and Puppy on the team. And Puppy be dead. So, this game, I really think that, uh, fair to say the Empire have a pretty good advantage. Even though Na'Vi have been pressuring the map a good chunk and they've gotten a tier 2 mid and such, I don't think they're getting nearly enough done at this stage in the game. And sooner or later, that Spectre is just going to become an unkillable death god. And all of a sudden, you're just... You're dead. Like, you yeah. can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, what Radiant's does this lineup actually do? Attack. Is it just going to be, like, massive Radiant's super again? Split push? Is that is that the goal? Have to, oh, blink initiation oh, coming from he Doom. He needs a look to get out of here, Kuroki. He gets blown up. Havos walking in. Confused. He's going to try to make it out there, but the Mass Serpent Wars are focusing on it. That's so assumption for show from Always Wanna Fly. And, well, the Mass Dead for God just got killed, but he has Aegis. Yeah. I... <laughs> Kuro seemed indecisive. Radiant's no, but he hesitated. Like, when he blinked in, he could have gotten the Doom off, but I think he decided that he wanted to Doom somebody else at the last second and then, like, recast it or something because that was a very long time to not be able to cast your spell. Like, I don't know. He, a... he seemed like he got lifted instantly to me. I don't know. I, I think there was time. Okay. But we'll ask him. We'll just be like, hey, when you blinked in top, did you actually, like, change your Doom target because it felt like it took a while? But still, Van score on his game, yeah. as always. A player, man. Van score is so good. I get the hype now, guys. I get the hype. Well, suddenly, if we're going to talk about how a head Empire is, there's a Blink and Force staff already online on Batrider. This is the Batrider that got killed essentially twice on the bottom lane. What's the story of the Triangle Boots? When you get attacked with Triangle Boots, don't you move slower? Isn't you do. Yes. So when you latch onto someone, don't you want to move at like a fast speed? Yeah, but the idea behind it is when you have Triangle Boots, you never really have to go base or anything like that. And when you blink in, you already have a force staff to pull yourself away from the other team anyway. So we're just assuming that that's going to get him far enough in position to where the tranquil boot deficit movement speed doesn't really matter that much. At least that's my take on it. And I having mean, the four armor is always nice. Like regardless yeah. of the the boots breaking or not, you're still going to get that four armor. So. Yeah. Well, mask he's going Mask of Madness anyway, so he'll have a 20% bonus movement speed from that on demand. And he's even going it before he gets a BKB, which is ballsy. Pretty ballsy, yeah. But hey, I mean, hey, Empire are kind of owning this game as it stands right now. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like whenever Haunt gets pressed on Team Empire, Navi just... Like, that's when Poopy okay. hits a fan and they just get confused. I don't mean to cut you off, but I, I, I very seldomly look at the graphs and think that this is indicative of how the game's going. But okay. just look at the experience graph. <laughs> just look at it. It's 19 minutes Radiant's in. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Navi have a five-man lineup that not only do they not have a gold lead, they are almost being doubled in overall experience. Don't worry, they have the split push. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say that it's looking bad, 
No, you can say it's looking bad. It's Radiant's looking pretty bottom bad. Tower is under attack. Oh my god, what's this? With the, uh, no, Dendi's just messing with them. He's only screwing with them, man. And what? really, what does buying time do? If you're Dendi in this situation... He's not buying any time. Whoa, Dendi! 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 I think Bruno just summed that up perfectly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone was actually able to hear him, but he basically just said, What the hell? All right, well, here comes Kuroki. He dooms Vanscore, which is really only the part that he can't do. He's trying to right-click his way out of there, but he's trying to fight 3v1 Kuroki. He's trying to kill Mag. Not going to happen. We want the back line here. Havos trying to kill the Death God. He war blocks himself out of there. The mech comes through, so Silent's going to TP out just fine. And Havos, well, he needs to TP out or he's dead. He's dead. I wouldn't miss that. I see that call, GG. He's like... This game is so, so bad. So bad for them right now. They get eight kill. <laughs> Mag dies to the poison sting damage, I think, right there. But that's going to be a Radiance on Spectre. He's got Vanguard, Drums, Phase Radiance at 20 minutes. And a Quilling Blade. Who has Silent? Isn't it you? It Shane? is me. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Funnig on the top lane just dies to birds. Yeah, no big deal. Birds are dicks. Just birds. Everyone laughed at me. Actually, well. just birds. I don't want to say that this game looks a bit unwinnable <laughs> if you're Navi, but it ain't great. They have a lot of split push though. Okay, can... all right. Axe after up on Venomancer. He's not even level, level 10. 11. He's not. It's 21 minutes into the game. I just want to say. I just want to say. Once you get to level 16 with Venomancer over the Axe after on top, you're doing around 1,700 damage. Yeah, in the AOE. Turned on as well, so Look, you're the math go. guy, so I'm going to believe you. Yeah, it's actually 1752, I think. But, does it matter? No. No. It, well, if you hit five, it could matter. If you hit five, yeah. and they all get up and walk away from their keyboards, <laughs> maybe. I just don't see what they can do, because even if they doom silent during a fight, He's going to have money for buyback during the next engagements, and then he can just buy on back, back on. Yeah. So what hope do really Navi have of coming back? I'm actually asking that as a legitimate question. So what do they do? Do they delay the game and hope that the Doom can suddenly start transitioning into core items, which I thought he would be doing in the first place, but he's broke. I mean, he's level freaking 9, and he has a blink, and he's been AFK farming for pretty much the whole game. He's been involved with one kill. Like, he's 0-3 and 1. I, I think the only oh, legitimate chance the, the Necro 3, the going for the split push. That's, that's the game plan. Uh, the only legitimate chance that Navi has coming back is Danny getting massively huge with a blink dagger, hex and Dagon, and then just finding kills. And I just we are so far from that. Oh, well, here comes Ahan, her is dead. Oh, no. Accept her gives HP though. Not enough HP. Yeah, they're trying to kill Silent in. top lane. He got doomed. Dendi, he's gonna use March. Silent could be going down here. Yeah. I think he will go down. It's a big streak. There you go. There's your day. 1,100 gold right there. <laughs> Good trade. Well, except they're going to lose a tier 1. Yeah, I mean, all those towers that Navi has, they might as well not have them because they're going to go down regardless of what Navi's going to do. I, I think Navi's going to just go for the long game. Well, the Spectre kill was equal to a, a terror wow, kill. Wow, he's actually going Hex. He's not going for a, a Dagon. Yeah, I, I think Hex is the thing. Like, you just perma-hex somebody and hope that the enough Kill's gonna bring you back in the game because team fight's not gonna do it for you. Push is not gonna do it for you. Man, always on the fly is just gigantic on this visage. He's got a mech, a point booster, treads, and a medallion. Like, he has more farmed than pretty much everyone except for Tinker and Havos. I, just... I don't think Havos's farm means anything, so he might as well be more farmed than most of Nami. Hey, He's got level 2 ult now. Alright. It's game time. Has he used an ult this game? Aside I'm from that sure. one ult on the bottom. Uh, he's used it like twice. Bottom, Dendi. Not having a great time. He's trying to turn to use spells, but no unfortunately, turn what? time is. Uh, what? He's fine. He, what? He didn't have flame break. He flame breaked right away. Yes, which was a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is it flame breaked or flame broke? Flame broke it. He flame broke. That doesn't sound right. I don't Let's know go what that means. Feel. Shane, I can't ask you for advice on English anymore. <laughs> you can yeah. ask me for advice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really good at their language. <laughs> I'm that's, better. That's what I heard. Yeah. <laughs> but either way, he still continuing to hold on by a very thin thread. We'll call it that. And Puppy's forced into these items that normally you would want to try to get a blink. He goes Bracer Ogre Club. That's how terrified he is of haunt damage. You know, I think Navi and Puppy in particular 
he really well doom happens and, and sometimes, sometimes yeah but that wasn't even like it doesn't even matter mm -hmm. he's coming in he's just kind of casually walking around he's gonna get a level death always want to fly get a resummon the birds here comes the coil it's gonna be killed for always off. want to fly again yeah then he's like sorry buddy I'll sing tales of your valor, but I'm out of here. So Puppy is one of those players that really likes to get very, very tanky support heroes. And this is going back to the days where he got things like Vanguard on Enigma before Blink, which like drove people nuts, Radiant's me in particular. But it really attack. works because in a situation like this where you can't really rely on Blink Daggers when you're dealing with Haunt, and here comes a Haunt, and it's going to go on the middling, I think. Oh, wow. And the and Wow, they get them both. And that's what I was talking about in terms of just potential and global presence Run, little Neko, baby. there's nothing that Navi can do to split push because if haunt is up and they have a bat rider with a blink dagger it, or yes. a foil or anything like that there's just so many methods to oh my stop God. the rat dota Kuroki gets blinked he gets he gets his war stop stolen he gets lifted back I think Vanscore yeah. just played him Vanscore plays a lot of people man yes don't let the Owen 2 fool you this man is a god of Rubik he's actually playing the other four heroes as well so yeah he's microing everything yeah, I think if Navi's gonna win, it can't be due to split push. Even though they have heroes like Kinker and, and Prophet, split push is not gonna work when there's Haunt and Blink Dagger Bat and Blink Dagger Puck. Push so, two lanes at the same time. Hopefully the Haunt duration doesn't last that long. Nah, man, I think you just farm Hex and that's it. And the Hex God. I just don't know. When get I'm this actually hard. shocked when they died bottom that they didn't just tap out. Because, like you said, if you can't play Rat Dota, as Tinker Furion, what is your game plan? You play Hex Dota. Look, legitimate two Hex carriers. Yeah, Just two legitimate Hex carriers. Gotta find the goal. That Spectre's gonna have a heart soon. And then suddenly... Doesn't mean you can't Hex him. Well, I mean, yeah, you can Hex him as many times as you want, but there I'm pretty go. sure you're gonna die Radiance damage before you actually kill him. Havos is gonna get picked off by Resolution. What I'm not understanding is why... Oh my goodness, they're gonna still fight this. They're gonna go right on Vanscor. Vanscor dead immediately. They're gonna go for a little bit more. Always wanna fly. Trying to use birds to retreat. But there's Flyback coming out from Batrider, and it's time to get the hell out. Well, Spectre's got a in about 10 seconds. Yeah, and then it's time for the Twerculator, as they say. But uh, Gem on the ground. Mag's gonna pick it back up. Mask of Madness activated. Silent's gonna casually get himself stuck in trees. No big deal. He's just sitting there waiting to press or. Yeah, my question is like, why is Venomancer there in the first place? Like, pass, like right next to the Roshan pit. Like, he, he shouldn't be there. He can't be there. Oh, getting a free kill on Resolution. A little bit of dooming in the jungle. All right, so they'll take that. Oh, here comes Vanscor with a Haunt coming in. Oh, the war stop. Coming in huge. Kuro okay. trying to get away. Okay. Gale hits on two. All right, here comes Stinker. Still taking some damage. Yeah, laser is there. March of the Machine's going to be used. Vanscor still trying to retreat. Throws another hey. Fable, but he's going to be going down. Both gets it. Okay. You know, they're Good not out of it either. just yet. I mean, the Spectre just got Gale and casually walked away from three heroes, but... Look, it's fine. When you have Vanguard, drums, and a Reaver on top? Yeah. Oh, birds are... Oh, birds. I think birds are gonna kill a Vols, a Vols run. He's like, no, not again. <laughs> Those things do an obscene amount of damage, by the way. Yeah. More than any like, hero, nearly. It's crazy at the start. Well, when you have three of them... Yeah. I mean, you take one volley and it's what 324 damage right now and they get a volley out every like quarter of a second or something yeah it's actually to be fair like we're saying or you're saying that like empires won this game and really navi should have been gging and stuff like that but how is empire gonna high ground against this team in fact despite how much of a lead the empire has been looking at the charts they're up by 7500 gold a ton Dyer's of experience all the tier two are still alive they have the Spectre to pick up the thing last, so on Funnick again, yeah. he's gonna be dropping Yeah, I mean, ball. yeah, okay, Funnick's dying. That's good. Okay, so, but all the tier two are still alive, and that must be, Navi's are doing something correctly. Like, they're basically trading their life for this, these, these creep equilibrium to be constantly pushed. And Empire, as much as they want to push, they're not pushing. Well, that's the game plan, really, if you're Navi. Oh, because... Hex out there and Tinker? I think this is actually one of the perfect games to do it, but he needs Hex first. Yeah, I, I think he needs Hex for sure. The thing is, if you're in Navi's position, since you can't split push, your only game plan is to do that. Throw your bodies at the meat grinder to keep the creeps off of your side of the map to delay the game. Right. But 
The Spectre is going to have a heart incredibly soon, and my answer to how do they go high ground is just Spectre just walk hits up. R. Yeah. Like, that's okay. how they go high ground. <laughs> because they will have to run. There's no way they're going to be able to stand to that kind of damage. I mean, so. like, even if you're going for high ground, yes, he hits R, but there's going to be enough static defense in forms of March of Machine, multiple layers of that, and wards. Like, I don't know, it's man. still hard to push against high ground. I think you're overestimating it. At least right now. Maybe the maybe Navi win a couple more fights, then suddenly things change. Or or Empire just wins one fight and win the game. Like I, I think they're, they're at that point that if Empire wins one decisive fight, the game is just flat out over. Regardless of Or they could just take Roshan, and I feel like it's still kind of over. Okay. Fair. Especially if Spectre has an Aegis. Oh yeah, I, I mean killing him once is gonna be hard enough. Getting another I, I don't actually, know if that's gonna be possible. I actually think you don't put the Aegis on Spectre. I think you put it on somewhere else. Who? Maybe the Bat Rider, maybe the Puck. But Bones Bat Rider is used Zulti, he's kind of Actually, like I think useless. Puck is, is a very valid target. With Dagon 5, that cool, two cooldown of that thing is ridiculously short. You could get off multiple Dagons in the fight. Yeah, I could see them giving it to the Puck. I don't think it's the worst thing. And I mean, plus, do you think Spectre needs the Aegis? Well, it's not, a it's not necessarily about need. It's just being able to commit to the fight so hard, you know? Sure. Like, you can just go super deep if you find an opportunity and you want to go for kills and try to just end it right then and there. Denied. Yeah. Top nice top job. Silent kids it. But um, as far as that goes, there's two arguments. There's one saying you can give it to the Spectre to make sure that she can have two lives. And there's the other saying, well, hey, if you just farm buyback, she can just hop back into the fight anyway. And then you can have two people with two lives which in some senses would be better, but it's yeah. also sacrificing money to make that happen. So if they did that, they would have to be pretty damn sure they're going to be able to racks. Yeah. Links in, the lift is right there, but Vanscore now steals. Oh, he's after him. Okay, man, he's got haste. He's got Scorched Earth. Yeah, so does Vanscore. Actually, Shivas is uh, not a bad way to go about this. I mean, I guess any item you get is, is, is pretty good when you're Navi right now. Big Smoke Gang coming out from Team Empire. They want to have at least two, three kills, and once they do get two, three kills, they could just go straight up for the racks. And they will find Puppy. He's inside the place. Rest in peace, Puppy. Oh Killing him is actually oh, fairly Phoenix. huge. Phoenix dead. Because he's one of the few heroes on the team who actually have stationary defense. And yeah, Phoenix is going to be getting picked off here by Silent. So not having the Mass Serpent Wards for around 30 seconds. I don't think that's going to be enough time for them to really get anything big like a tier 2. But, well, Look speaking of Look at the creep big, wave. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, man. I mean, Navi are playing it as well as you could have expected them to at this stage, but Dyer's early it just went so bad for them. No, it looked pretty good. Like, remember they bulldozed the tier one good. tower, and then the no, bull just says, "I'm gonna TP out when they jump on us." Resolution was crushing mid, like the yeah. whole time. Like right. he was doubling first Denny's blood CS, blood. right? I mean, yeah, they got first blood, but that was expected, and they actually missed a kill. So technically, they should have killed back twice. Right. Yeah. But they only killed him once. Okay. Karoki finds a doom on Vansk. Again, I just not really understanding why they're all the way across the middle of the map. And then he now joins it. He's going to have to blink himself out, and he does. I mean, they're delaying. These delay tactic is insane right now. You got pulled into a pit. I mean, if that's their only tactic, we're going to be here for a while. I don't mind. I mean, they need to delay for a long time. Yeah, I, I love these games. I love the games where, like, there's just no chance of winning, and teams are just trying so hard to make it happen. You got oh, it. now you've turned. Now you say there's no chance. Oh, Before no, no, you were like, no. No oh, chance, man, metaphorically. You're... I think they still have a oh, chance. Almost. That's Resolution damage. with a double damage. <laughs> <laughs> he pops the Ghost Scepter just in time to get zapped by a Fade Bolt. No, a I, life. I think, I think Navi still has a shot. <laughs> Is he going... Oh, they want to go on silent here. I, I don't know. There's no Aegis. Taking a little bit of damage from Martian the Machines. A little yeah, bit of damage. Action. I mean, it's, it's a little itty bit amount of damage. The thing is, when you have maxed out Dispersion, nothing really oh, hurts you that much when you have a heart. So speaking of which, they just did go on the puck. Is uh, Havos going for Dagon? Havos? No, he's going for, for um, Veil Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, amps March, amps his own ults. Not bad. It only amps half of March. Yes. Yeah, because composite mm -hmm. damage. Composite damage. Mm, amps that Scourge Earth, let's be real, guys. <laughs> and the sheep is. Yeah, every, every. Hey, man, Nature's Profit ulti actually hurts a lot there when you it go. gets to level 16. There you go. Resolution, going for the escape here. I think I've ever seen someone 35 minutes into the game with two GG branches in their inventory. Like Funiko. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kuro. Just caught out, Lasso coming out from Mag. Okay, Silence on top of it. Resolution, he gets hexed. They're trying to help Kuro here. He's not dead just yet. He gets a war stop off. Uh, the fuck that's you like the, Yeah, that's the spite stop. Okay, so the big difference of these kills in terms of him dying right in front of his tier 2 tower versus dying halfway across the map is that 
right after Empire gets these killed, they could just straight up push. And it looks like they're gonna try to set up a kill on Silent on the top lane. They're gonna go for it. Ward's gonna get dropped down. Here comes a Shaco. Where's the TP on Funnick? Funnick's like half my. <laughs> okay. All right, Perma Hexing time. They're gonna go on Silent. He does not have the Hs. He doesn't have enough mana for the Perma Hex. The wards are still going on. But guess what? Oh, they're gonna kill you. I told you. Perma Hex is the way to go. Mag is gonna abuse the game. Because why is this happening right now? <laughs> He's actually stuck inside of the rocks. Like, it's almost impossible to keep up with where he is, and then he gets stuck. Oh, the creeps see him. He bolts back in. He wants to go for Funnick. The lasso's their resolution. He goes to the orb, always want to fly in the meantime, picking up a kill on Havos, and that's a very dead Funnick. It's a double for resolution, so they can make pretty much everything. Oh. Level death. Okay. You know, right. and the end of the day is a four, five for two train. What a clowny ass game, man. Look, the game's not over yet. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's pretty over, but it's not over yet. <laughs> I mean, they pretty much everything to silent just to kill him. They did. I mean, yeah, they uh, mission look, success. Look, look at the mini map, Andy. Tier twos are still up. <laughs> Tier twos are still up, and guess what? Once Dendi goes for this axe scepter, our minds will be blown, and games will be won. And axe refresher on fury. I really do. I agree see. with that too. Well, yes. he needs hex first. Hex yes. first. I Always really do want to see Ags Tinker just because it's hilarious to see the laser range and four yeah. rockets flying every single time somebody tries to fight. The reality of it is, four rockets would actually destroy Empire. You look at how close that fight was. The pug ran away with like no HP. Yeah, but Bad we have Rider. to consider. Silent was by himself for like ten seconds. That yeah, and Puppy was by himself for ten seconds too because Funic whiffed the TP. Yeah, but it it doesn't. Yeah, I yeah, guess, no, no, but, yeah, but the Ags in a team fight, the Spectre's gonna have his ulti open, the uh, Rockets are just gonna hit the Spectre illusions. So. No, illusions. Rockets don't hit illusions. Do they know? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure they do. Hey. Lumi? What? I don't think they do. Oh, yeah, I don't think they wood. do. Okay. Wait, actually, I'm, do they? I'm positive you do. Yeah, yeah they do. Okay, they, they, do. they do. Oh, no, it's Concussive Blast that doesn't hit illusions. Oh no, Dandy. Oh, he's got, oh, he's got Perma Hex. Yeah. Oh, here he is. Oh, oh, oh. It's round he's two. Oh, yeah. And Funnix is here. Where's the Shaco? Here comes the Batrider. He's going to cancel the Shaco. It's oh, back time. It's back time. All right. Nobody lost anything. Let's go home. All right. Man, I feel so bad for Puppy. It's just like getting radianced. He's like almost a half elf. He has right. PKB now. Yeah. Here, here's some math coming out, all right? Real fast. So if the enemy team has 4K gold, you have 2K, right? They're doubling your gold. Right. We're 10 minutes in. But if we're 60 minutes in... Oh, no, no, Funnick. Solution. Funnick. Yeah, it's gone. Be dead. No, no the Hex on Dendi. They want to go for the Silo, but he goes for the wall, and Dendi gets picked. Fans go with the huge plays. He pops the Ghost Scepter. He wants to try to do whatever damage that he can. Fans go for the Silo, for another steal. Yeah, they're just going to lose that. And again, the worst part is they're dying right in front of the Tier 2, which means this Tier 2 is entirely dead. Well, that Nova is actually doing quite a bit of work. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, 1756? Radiance or was it 1752? I thought you said it was 52. Fallen. Yeah. 1750. Are you just making up numbers? No, I'm Listen, not. Just because you're so good at math doesn't mean you can just make shit up you on the fly, right? That. Look, Bruno does that shit all the time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, so... Radiance GG. bottom tower is under attack. Um, I'm not seeing them Radiance defending this, especially not without my circle wards, which is down for another 30 seconds. So at the very least, they're going to get Rex. one Rex. Yeah. Which I, mean, I think against the Prophet and Tinker one. doesn't mean much. I think it means a lot, actually. Okay. The whole purpose Radiance of your lineup is to keep the lanes push. Oh, fair, fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The whole time. That's attack. actually a pretty damn big deal. Oh, and they're gonna find Kuro again. Yeah, this is this is massively difficult at this point. Yeah. At least yeah, resolution is farming some points for me, man. Ten, one, and nineteen. Empire Radiance just seem to be on a roll, man. They, they are. They beat Navi today twice. Two for two. Once in Starladder. Once in Ace. Sorry, you dream late now. They won last game against Sigma. Can anyone take them down? Premier League champions, maybe. <laughs> wait, day, wait day four, Bruno called it. Bruno is just like wait spouting till his Empire versus Cloud9, and that's gonna be magic right here. Calling it magic. Magic. I'm gonna keep that in my mind. Okay. It's gonna be 